Alright guys, welcome back and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Pirate for faster password cracking or password recovery, whatever you want to call it. So this is a program and by the way it comes pre-installed in Kali just like Aircrack, another reason I love Kali. And what it does is it actually uses all of the cores in your system to help speed up this process. So let's say you're cracking like a few million passwords, that's how many you want to try. With Aircrack, it's only going to use one core and it's going to take quite some time. With Pirate, you can either choose to use your CPU, so if you have a multi-core processor, or you can actually use your GPU or your graphics card because your graphics card has a bunch of cores in it, like hundreds and hundreds. So um, I'm only going to be showing you guys how to use the CPU, but the concept is the same. And by the way, before we start, there's another program called Hashcat which is, I don't know, kind of like the most popular one for um, cracking passwords with uh, your graphics card because you can actually do it with multiple graphics cards. So we're going to be learning about that later on, which is kind of like the cream of the crop for password cracking. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started with Pirate. So to use it, you just use Pirate. And if you just want to see how many cores you have, you can just write list underscore cores. So like I said, in this video, I'm going to be using my CPU, and I have eight cores available. So this means essentially I'm going to be able to crack these passwords eight times as fast. So let me just clear out of there. So you basically need to give it two things. The first one is your capture file, and the second one is a password list. So just like Aircrack. Now, I'm going to uh, warn you guys that I moved to a different computer. And I just made a real quick capture file because I changed my password on my router because what was the other one, like bacon123. So I changed my password. So this capture file doesn't actually have my password. So I'm just going to show you guys how to use it. But we're in, my password is really long and confusing. So it's clearly not in this dictionary. So anyways, pirate minus R. And mine was in desktop captures WPA capture 01 dot cap. And then you write analyze. Boom, roasted. So got your capture file. And remember, these capture files, they need to have a valid handshake in them. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, watch my tutorial like two videos ago. And once you analyze it, it's going to say boom, roasted. We indeed did get a valid handshake. And if you ever want to just check, like get an overview of everything, pirate eval. What this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, yeah, you got your uh, capture file, but you don't have any passwords yet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have our list of passwords, and we're going to actually add it to the pirate database. So I'll show you guys how to do that Well, right now. So anytime you have a list of passwords and you want to import them into pirate, then you just write pirate minus I and then wherever your passwords are. So security, list, passwords, I think mine's called like top 1 million dot text. And then this last command is just import underscore passwords. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through this file and it's going to import all of those into the pirate database. Now I'll show you guys a cool thing about this in just a second, but what we basically did is now that we have the passwords taken care of, we just need to add the Wi-Fi target. So that's another piece of the puzzle whenever whenever it calculates that formula for the pre-shared key. And this is basically the last thing that you really need to do. So pirate minus E, and then the name of my Wi-Fi is Bucky's Wi-Fi, and then I can just write create underscore ESS ID. Hit enter. Now it has the passwords. It has the capture file, it has my Wi-Fi's name, it's good to go. So I'm just going to show you guys this. If you write pirate eval again, remember this just evaluates everything, give you an overview of it. And it says, all right, we got your ASS ID, we're aware of that, and we also got all those passwords you imported. And remember, I imported 1 million passwords, but it says passwords available 488. 132, not even half a million. So why the heck did it import them all? This is one thing that throws a lot of people. So basically what it's gonna do is it automatically filters the passwords that aren't 
suitable for WPA uh, or WPA2 password cracking. And that means WPA only allows you to use passwords of a certain length. And what it's going to do is if it's if a password is below that length, like ABC, then it's not even going to add it to the database. So why waste time trying that? Also, if you ever try to import a bunch of passwords and there are duplicates, then Pyre automatically removes the duplicates for you so you don't have to try the same password twice. So all this is going on behind the scenes, um, but that's why you know our password that are available, all those aren't as big as the file that we imported. Pretty cool. So the last thing that we need to do, I said, I think I said that before, but this is um, two other commands. Pirate batch and whenever you hit enter on this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna start processing those passwords or calculating um, the formulas that you need in order to start cracking. All right, so once it's done batch processing our files, then we can finally launch our attack. So just call pirate, and you just need to say where your capture file is. So minus R, and mine is in desktop, captures, and WPA.cap, and we just write attack underscore db so hit enter and watch how long this takes and by the way i actually timed this with aircrack it takes two and a half minutes whenever i'm just running aircrack so i'm about to hit enter and look at that like <laughs> i don't even know if it took a second for one million pass well it isn't one million it's actually about half a million but still check that out and of course it says password not found because remember the key to a dictionary attack is having the password in that dictionary but now we have to ask ourselves you know some places some people and some organizations they're gonna have really long passwords that just aren't practical to crack with a dictionary attack so what other solutions do we have are we just screwed well we aren't and in the next tutorial I'm gonna show you guys even when someone has an incredibly long and incredibly complex password that would take years and years to crack with a dictionary attack, there is an awesome method that we can use to get around that in some cases, in a lot of cases, and uh, I'll be showing you guys that. But before I let you guys go, just remember that that first command I showed you, that analyze, that was just to see if you had a valid handshake. You don't actually need that in your attack if you know that there's a handshake. Just remember to Add your password file to the database, add your Wi-Fi or ESSID, and then you can launch your attack. So um, I'll just show you guys how to delete your um, ESSID and delete your passwords from your database if you ever want to. This is just kind of bonus information. So if you want to delete your ESSID, maybe we're done attacking my Wi-Fi, you don't want any evidence on our computer, just write minus E, Bucky's Wi-Fi delete ESSID. So this is the exact same command for adding your Wi-Fi, but instead of create ESSID, we're just running delete ESSID. And are you sure you want to delete this? Yes. And there you go. Now to delete all those passwords, let's say, actually I did this uh, before. I was testing and I actually added my real password to the database and I'm like, hmm, probably shouldn't have that in there. So you actually need to um, delete the entire database. Then you can just re-import everything. If you just write rm minus rf dot pirate, and this is just the path where it's at, blob space, password, there you go. So you're gonna remove everything, and this removes everything in the directories. It's recursive, and hit enter. So pirate eval. We can analyze everything. We now have zero passwords. We now have zero networks we want to target. We're pretty much back to basics. Now the last thing um, I want to say is whenever you import passwords into your database, you don't have to do it all at once. You can you know, import a huge file of passwords that you found online. And then if you find another one, you don't have to choose between them. You can just run that same command again and it's going to import password by password it's automatically going to check to make sure that they're the right length and also that there are no duplicates so just import every single password you know file you can have and it's going to do the rest for you so pirate is pretty awesome also going to be showing you guys how to use hashcat in the future which is even faster than this so uh, yeah that's what we have to look forward to 
I will see you guys in the next video.